is edit it. So if you're just joining us now, you're the one viewer. Um, as usual, there's that awkward bit. And if anybody's done a YouTube live stream, you press the button and you don't know if it's actually live or not. It says it is, but sometimes it just isn't. And it means that Jim does his little freeze, which we then don't know if he's had a stroke, his, his internet is frozen, but his eyes move, so we're all good. Um, welcome to our circle for <laughs> 2021. Always start off with a good thing about strokes because they're hilariously comedic, uh, particularly in the presence of HR professionals. <laughs> um, today we are launching a whole series of things for the future. I've, I've just funny, I've just uh, keep trying to do a big old update about what 2021 looks like without being miserable about 2020. Um, we did some lovely things last year. Uh, we have had 400 hours of view time. We've had 100 and something guests. I can't remember where it was. Um, we supported LD Cares. We supported IHR Live in London, although it clearly wasn't in London. And we got True Manchester on the line rather than in the room, which was a, was a shock for everybody, but we did that as well. And this year we've got loads of events. Obviously, we're not going to mention all of them because I'll be in trouble. Jim knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I do, I do. Definitely nothing to do with Berlin, everybody. Not Berlin. <laughs> That's enough trouble for me. Um, as always, we've got Elizabeth, we've got Jim, we've got me. Um, Jim and me have already agreed we're probably going to shut up um, until I've spoken to, because there's a danger that with HR stuff, we just say the wrong thing. We don't mean to. We're just, we're just simple folk, and we amble into some sort of HR-based ambush. Um, but really today is all about the future of, of work and the future of HR particularly, looking at... What, what happens now? We've been through uh, a pandemic. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, off, offline, I was saying to everybody, obviously we're in the UK, we're happy and we're safe with 4% of our population now with a vaccine. Um, you know, our, our great illustrious country is sailing off into the glorious sunset of whatever, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Um, making Britain both bigger, better and greater um, despite having no food or medicine. Anyway, um, with that happy note, Elizabeth, over to you, and I will shut up. I love it. I love it. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to our circle, and a special warm welcome to all of my friends. It is quite awesome. Uh, very rarely do I just get to get like a, a little chatted with awesome people that I know out of my circle and into our circle. So, again, um, hi, I'm Liz Lumpke, and today we are going to be just having an open round discussion. As Martin said, it's kind of like, you know, we meet up at the at a coffee shop in olden times or at a conference at a bar. And it's really kind of, uh, you know, here we are in HR and I know that I've met all of these people uh, somewhere at a bar. Um, so yes, um, I am going to, um, after we go in and introduce each one of you that you guys can say a little bit about who you are and that you're actually not in Britain. Um, I think that this is really probably one of our most international R circles that we've had. And what we really want to do, the topic is the, the brave new world of HR. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it and where oftentimes it goes into theoretical and where we also wanna say, okay, but pragmatically, what does that look like? We always get a lot of criticism, but what are we actually doing? So with that, I am going to open it up um, to my wonderful friend, um, Letty um, down in Mexico. So Letty, would you be so kind, my dear, as to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you. Thank you, Liz, for the invitation. I'm really proud uh, to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Leticia Raviela, Letty, everybody call me Letty. So uh, I'm in Mexico, I'm the director of HR. And of course, it's been a really changing year, past year. And of course, the future will be even more. So um, I'm around 25 years in HR, so a little bit experience there. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we have a really good conversation this afternoon. Thank you. I love it. And the thing about Letty is like, she'll say 25 years, you would think it's only five from the way that she looks. Um, she retains her youthful vigor through everything and she's been through a lot so i'm so excited to have Letty on the on the show cool um mark so good to see you we saw each other the last time in amsterdam um so here can you introduce yourself yeah sure yeah hi everyone um really happy to be here so um i'm mark major um head of learning and development for mr specs which is um an omni-channel optician um i'm based in berlin 
So I'm not sure what uh-huh. that scandal was about <laughs> earlier, but I'll have to catch up on that. And um, yeah, so I guess I'm the New Zealand component. Uh, originally from New Zealand, studied in Australia, Canada, then ended up in Europe. And um, uh, my background, I've been all over the place. I, I am one of the worst HR people here, probably. I don't have 25, 30 years of HR experience. Uh, my background is more in science uh, and selling, and I found my way through coaching into an HR transition and an organizational development role. So, um, yeah, a bit of a varied past, but I'm really happy to be in the circle and contribute. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Love it. All right. Well, then, um, Annie. Yes, perfect. Thank you for having me, actually. My name is Annie. Um, I'm located in Stuttgart, Germany. So also, <laughs> as Elizabeth and Mark, I'm from Germany. Um, I'm from Germany, but studied in Australia and also in Canada for a certain time. And now I'm, I think I have worked now in HR for about like seven years in total different companies already. Like this started all in fashion company and went through um, like a consulting company, went to uh, and the automotive industry. And now I'm leading um, the HR department um, for Smart Europe. So, um, and that's my job and I love HR and I'm really excited to, to be here today. Awesome. Thank you, Ani. Love it. All right, Minola. I had I had to unmute myself because otherwise I would have prompted the quote of 2020 with your on mute. So uh, good, good whatever time of the day it is for you, lovely people, whether it's morning, afternoon, or or evening. Uh, my name is Minola Jacques. I'm I'm a journalist by trade. Um, stumbled upon change management by accident about 17 years ago, and and I've been enjoying it ever since. I'm currently based in Luxembourg. I'm originally from Romania. I'm half Romanian, half Hungarian. I lived around Europe, the US, a little bit in, in, in Oman. Um, and I've been working um, as a change manager primarily, either within or very close with HR teams as one of the key stakeholders in large scale transformations. And um, very, very happy to, to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you, Manola. And then finally, but certainly not lastly, my friend, Alan. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Thanks so much for having me. It's nice to meet everybody for the first time, many of you. And uh, my name's Alan. I'm Chief Operating Officer for Grasp HR. We're a mentoring platform that helps redefine platform, uh, redefine mentoring in large enterprise organizations. I'll be happy to share some stories about that a little bit later. And I've been working in the L&D HR tech space for about 15 years. I'm American, originally from Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota. I'm living just outside of Barcelona. And I'm also French. And I'm uh, a husband as well with two and a half boys. I have to say that because we have another boy coming soon. And the other two might storm in on this uh, chat at some stage. Maybe not if we're lucky, but or maybe if we're lucky, you might enjoy seeing my boys uh, stumble in. So. <laughs> well, it's future of HR. We have to make sure that we're good with the succession planning. So <laughs> as early yeah. as we can get there them. Go. Yeah. <laughs> That was our think, our long-term thinking, right? Uh, that was our long-term thinking. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So my one request is that everyone goes off of mute and goes on to um, full that we're, it's, it's a conversation. So as we're going to be talking, um, chime in. You guys know me um, all very well. I, I thrive on different opinions and listening and that we, we get to know what, um, what are we thinking? So one thing I wanted to ask you guys is this question came in of the, the future of HR, you know, um, McKinsey brought out their, um, their model that got a lot of feedback because it was, you know, here, how, you know, how do we show up? How do we grow? And how do we operate? And a lot of people were irritated because they said, but this is about purpose or your culture is your magic sauce, or you really need to get serious about your values. And the feedback was, is like, ah, oh, that's so vague. We can't do anything with that. Um, and I know a lot of you, especially I'm looking over to Letty, 
um, has done has done a lot of work around how do we make the values real? How do we make it around purpose so that people really identify with what we're doing? So I wanted to just kind of take that that kind of little trigger to say, oh, it's too vague that we really have a discussion about how do we make those things, the secret sauce really real that it, that resonates um, throughout our organizations. So Letty, can you take us, perhaps kick us off? Sure. Um, values is a huge part, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody have different values and how you put that all together in a company and make sure that we follow up that those values or how you make them uh, really something that you can even touch, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it's it's really difficult uh, thinking my values, even uh, here in this group, mm -hmm. maybe we have different values, right? So how, how we get together uh, in an environment where we believe that certain values are the ones that are going to um, make us be together and working on that environment with certain values. So, of course, we need to ask our people, what are those values that are really now uh, being more effective? Uh, like inclusion, right? Mm -hmm. One of the values that right now are more uh, that we listen everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Inclusion, but what is inclusion really and mm -hmm. how we make sure that all the employees uh, uh, that we have in a company are really following that value and make sure that we are part of it. So that's that's a really hard work right now and for the future to do in HR and make sure that we all uh, get into that value. So what is inclusion? Uh, for me, it's simply accepting each other as we are, right? Mm -hmm. We all have differences and we always do. So uh, it's how we get the most of each other uh, being with our differences and make sure that that value is there and we all accept each other with the differences in thinking, in uh, wearing clothes, in um, religion or whatever it is, right? But uh, make sure that we listen to each other. And of course, uh, it comes with the respect value as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, and I'd like to, you know, how do we pick up on this? Because I think, you know, I think inclusion is a perfect one is um, we're talking about inclusion while, you know, um, I don't want this to sound bad, where it's oftentimes about kind of our, um, the things that other people could notice about it. Um, it's about our sexual orientation, our religion, et cetera. But what is it when it's really about what are the different ideas? You know, how are we being included? And if we have a different opinion, if we're coming at something from a very different angle, how are we getting the opportunity that we're listened to, that it's not about our otherness, but that we, we look to say, okay, how are those different opinions getting space and not being, uh, that's, that's not something you say here. That's not something you do here. Yeah, Manola. Um, I, I resonate very much with what Letty said. Um, mm -hmm. And I, ever since I started thinking about this, this conversation, there was something that kept popping up in my mind as an underlying theme. Mm -hmm. And that's how um, HR people should redefine the entire employee experience and engagement, which ties into the values and specifically how do they look at moments that matter? Why they matter? Because I assume that would be changed a little bit after what we went through. Mm -hmm. And how do those moments that matter actually take place? Whether we're looking at um, fundamentally changed ways of working because of online, you know, offline, because of the gig economy, which will be a huge impact on, on business models and on how people will react to their work life and what will they be willing to invest in it and take out of it. How these moments that matter um, touch on their personal lives because more and more we, we 
stopped hearing about work-life balance and we hear about work-life blending. <laughs> so that's, that's one thing that we right. need to take into consideration. And mm -hmm. regarding how to make things concrete, Liz mm -hmm. knows me by, by now. Um, I always speak about, about books, but there is one particular book that, that for me, especially as a change manager, made this translation into concrete actions or behaviors very, very actionable. It is called, I'm afraid Debbie from marketing has left for the day. It is a book on behavioral design written by a Danish guy. So you get the usual Nordic, no sugar coating. Um, <laughs> and it says that there is a huge divide that people, especially people in HR now, now have that opportunity to bridge between the ideal world, which is the world in which we define values such as be client-centric, be proactive, be inclusive, and the real world, when people get into the office or go online 9.30 on a Tuesday morning with a huge headache, getting ready to homeschool in parallel and having their third customer screaming on the phone. And what are the behaviors mm -hmm. that you need them to display in order for you to be able to say, oh, okay, this is acting on our values. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's taking that piece. And I love that you spoke to that, Manola, because it's, it is, it's like, how do we take something that's oftentimes on the, on the posters of when you come into the building or on all of our presentations and say, how do these really show up in the moments that matter? Um, when we have these other things, when we are stressed, we're, we're humans, how are we, you know, looking at that, that aspect that, um, it's really around how we show up when in times of stress, when things are going great, when we're not furloughing, when we're not getting sick, when all of those different stressors mm. around, then it looks really pretty and we can talk to that. But it's really that piece of when does it really matter is when, when it's tight, when those strings are happening and what's going on. So yeah, Ani. So, well, I totally agree with Igo what um, the, um, to um, ladies before said, but actually, what I said, what I imagined, like when I what I when I talked with the employees before, like, and this is what I experienced last year, is mm -hmm. that purpose was more on what people want in their life. Currently, mm -hmm. they are more and more thinking what mm -hmm. they want in life. The purpose is not just about like the company; it's also about like what do I want in life, and so um. On New Year's Eve, for example, I, I, I was just on LinkedIn, like for, I think, an hour. And so many people changed their um, work experience. So they left their old companies, mm -hmm. started something new. I have never experienced something <laughs> like this before, that so many people are leaving their companies, mm -hmm. you know, starting something new. And I think the people are doing this that they search for a purpose in their life and they translate it in their professional life as well. And that's something really new for companies so that they have to have a purpose, which is mm -hmm. related to the um, employee's purpose. Mm -hmm. And they want to participate in this purpose and want to be part of it. And that's what I experienced a lot in the last couple of months. Yes. So well said. Yeah. Does, does the company's purpose resonate with my own personal purpose that I feel like the impact that I want to have on the world resonates with what this company is doing and, and, and why they exist? I love it. Cool. Are we allowed to ask questions too, Liz? Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a conversation at the bar. Alan. <laughs> I, do, I assume the answer is yes to that. So when, <laughs> when is the last time that all of you have been into your offices just out of curiosity, mm. if you have if you have a, a fixed office or a place that you would normally go um, pre prior to, to COVID, did I throw in March? March. So yeah, last I was in so I was in I was in my office in March for the last time. Say so hello if anybody's watching. Um, probably not. They've, they've forgotten about me now. Uh, and in the client office also in March as well. Seventeenth of March in a client office was the last time I was in a physically somewhere else's office. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't good though. <laughs> no fun. But, um, yeah, so yeah, so that, the week. So yeah, just the week before we, we locked down. So that was last time. It's March. Not, not been back. I've not missed it. That's not true. I, I, I missed biscuits. Yeah. 
I, I would say today, but that's a special answer because I left corporate world back in mid-2019. Uh, I've been working as a freelancer since then from home. So I, I am actually on, on, on the work sofa at the moment, which also <laughs> has it. It's the home sofa. <laughs> hey, that's great. I, even my sofa has multiple personalities. So yes, <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah different story for me December was the last time I was at the plant because it, it since it's manufacturing you know the life yeah. is different but but yeah I was yesterday actually oh, yeah. <laughs> all right Mark yeah, sure. uh, November November okay. yeah so I haven't even been to my office I changed position <laughs> during COVID so my <laughs> headquartered in London so I guess yeah. I went to the ward there right mm -hmm. yeah how, how have you found that because it's obviously one of the challenging things mm -hmm. people obviously do get new jobs and move how, how have you found not, not um, turning up in an office going hey it's me and that awkwardness of where's the toilet where's the coffee I missed that happy, you know? Actually, I could say I missed that that's um well it's been uh I guess a lot of people are experiencing the same things but in different ways um I would really just love to be able to be with my team and and just chat and do things that are related to business, but also not related to business. Mm -hmm. um, you can't really replace that remotely. Um, on the other hand, I mean, I've had tons of time with my family, which is great. Um, they, I, I saw something in the beginning, it's, it's quantity over quality uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the early days um, in terms of just like overload of trying to mm -hmm. balance so many things. But in that respect, it's been great because you can still you know, do many things and juggle many balls at one time. But um, it's been transitioning to a new position. It hurts mm -hmm. not being able to, to, to meet and be with my team, that's for sure. Going, going back to what we said about um, people search for meaning and people search for purpose and also taking a small step back to the McKinsey um, talking about values and meaning and purpose. Um, that is a conversation that's been going on more and more lately because how do you make sure that people that come into your processes, let's say, mm -hmm. into your ways of working that are separate geographically mm -hmm. um, through administrative setup of their uh, working agreement? So you cannot really align all of them behind a set of values who are printed on colorful posters by the elevator door and nobody actually gets to see them anymore. And um, the common denominator is to, is to have a purpose to which each of them know how they can contribute to and they can, you know, step up into their own role and, and use their own voice and use their own set of, set of capabilities. Well, I think what COVID-19 showed us was a little bit what Alan showed, like he just started a new job hasn't seen his team before and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And so before COVID, everyone was screaming, I want to have home office, home office is necessary to have. And now everyone is, I think it's just a step backwards right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I miss everybody. <laughs> oh, we have home office. So currently like everyone is answering, um, questioning myself. Oh, can I co come to the office? And I was like, oh, it's sorry. No, you are not allowed to come to the office right now. And this is so changing. And also like on, on the mental health topics, mm -hmm. I think a lot changing right now because some people are really alone at home. It's like not mm -hmm. they not have maybe the families, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever at home supporting each other while staying at home and they're doing quarantine or anything else. Um, but I think that's like something HR has to be more in common uh, into the, the topic of mental health. What, how can we support mm -hmm. our Absolutely. topic? How can we make sure they are not be going crazy at home because they are all the time a, a, um, a, alone at home? So this yeah. is, I think, a, a huge topic. Yeah, because I, I, I think... Uh... Oh, we people are really social so we need to be also face to face with somebody you know and have that uh, even 
like for me, it's really hard to not give a hug, you know? Yes, so, <laughs> absolutely, we're huge <laughs> huggers. <laughs> yeah, so, oh my God, it's like really hard. And, you know, all that uh, social distancing, mm. it's also uh, hitting uh, really uh important the part you said about the purpose and how we now do business how now I think of what I want in my professional life uh, but of course that it's always uh, with my personal life and how how I combine this with mm -hmm. the the situation that we have right now in front right so we need to keep in touch with our people uh, even uh, uh, online but we need to find different ways to make sure that they always have somebody to listen to them and to guide them uh, through these uh, difficult times and different times for everybody right mm -hmm. Ellen said something really, really awesome uh, before, you know, with, with missing interacting with people. And that also ties in with purpose because those moments, you know, when, when you're waiting by the coffee machine or you're just walking together with someone in or out of a meeting or when you're waiting by the Xerox copy machine, um, those are moments that matter in the sense that they create like I don't want to say the social fabric. I want to say the human fabric of the organization. Mm -hmm. And how do you build that online? Well, I, I think this is one, one, um, one big question. Um, how do you build that online? And then it will get even more complicated when you need to build that between teams who are online, offline, in various other combinations of, of work settings. And, and that, is, that is one way through which people build um, meaning together. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And I think if I think about what my customers are asking is exactly like, you know, here I'm onboarding a new leader or mm -hmm. how do I get team cohesion? Because we are so used to it, you know, here. I was happy because one of the things that I hated about becoming a freelancer was being at home all the time and missing my colleagues and friends and like having people to talk to. Like, like Letty said, we're, we're pretty social. It's like we're, why we're in HR. <laughs> um, it's actually a win. <laughs> um, so, and then how do you find a way? Because, you know, here we have different personalities. Some people want that dance party on Fridays. Other people are like, are you kidding me? That's the worst thing you could torture me with. Um, so, you know, um, how are we creating that sense of team where it's really beyond just kind of the coordinating work packages to say, how are we, you know, also understanding each other as people that we can, back to Annie's point to say, okay, how are we feeling with one another and that we are we're working remotely during a pandemic that's very different than working remotely this is that piece there's a lot of emotional strain social mm -hmm. strains etc um also kind of worrying about you know our own viability as you know do we have a job etc so what are you guys doing perhaps you know maybe a mark i'll turn it over to you um just to kind of trigger us on this is what are you guys doing to foster a real team cohesion rather than just kind of coordinating work packages in this strange kind of situation? Mm. I think, you know, there's nothing like a pandemic to show your, your organizational health uh, mm -hmm. and where you are with your culture. I think, um, you know, something that surprised me is um, it, it enhanced maybe or, or uh, exacerbated the effect that the culture was already having. So what I mean by that concretely is with companies that were already um, finding ways, not artificial ways, but had, you know, cross silo integration, there was a lot of communication, there was, there was good networking, um, the crisis hit and that was already in place. You didn't need to plan workshops for the next three months to develop that. And then uh, at the other end of the spectrum, you know, the companies that didn't have that in place at all, uh, they just really struggled. Um, and I think you you see that, you see a divergence. So the, to get back to your question, what were we doing concretely? I think the advantage, the benefit was that we had our culture in place for that. It was already a priority. Um, and, you know, before the um, pandemic hit, it didn't exactly make sense. You know, there wasn't a need to have that in place, but you just felt it was right. 
it was mm -hmm. the right thing to do. The humanistic mm -hmm. approach, um, the yep. people factors were important and this will pay off. And you saw small signals of that, you know, people function getting a little bit more data influence. You saw the signs of that, but you know, it wasn't really paying off. Um, and then when the pandemic hit, um, we had those mechanisms in place. So concretely what we were doing is just focusing on, um, I heard mental health yeah. uh, referred to earlier. You know, we were doing check-ins with people and really just mm -hmm. setting up mechanisms where the pulse check was not only about, you know, how do you feel about us as an organization, but how are you feeling? Yeah. Like just checking in yeah. with people really, yeah. um, you know, are you okay? Um, you yeah. know, people starting off conversations, just checking in with asking questions of each other. Like, how are you doing? Like, are you, how are the stress? Like, are you coping? Okay. Like those, those rituals to check in, but in all honesty, they were already happening. We just doubled down on them. So um, I think it affected different companies differently, but we were just lucky. Mm -hmm. oh, great point. Others? Yeah, I think we're uh, really into the health part mm -hmm. as well. So uh, we did several like uh, conferences or information that may help people go through this uh, part that it's different for them. Uh, because we always uh, have those conferences uh, via online, uh, but now it's uh, more common, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, since little things like ergonomics, how you put your uh, office in your house, uh, also the health part, hey, hey, it's good if you walk around your house or do different things. But uh, I think uh, we need to think out of the box and uh, even we are living that so yeah, that exactly help not. us <laughs> exactly <laughs> that help us to to find out what people may feel or may uh, think and how we can help them to be healthy uh, not only on the uh, on the mind side, but also, you know, uh, how they, they are managing their day-to-day -day, uh, work and life mm -hmm. with the kids uh, on the other room, with uh, the dog, the friend, uh, whatever it is, right? But how you manage all that? And, uh, and that's something that we can help uh, our people to go through these uh, different moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that's what also COVID-19 shows. You have to be as much as flexible as a company as you can. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like, that's like, it's a true it's social and adaptive in person. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> it has to be like, as flexible as you can. Yeah and support your employees there. And I think that's like um, when employees are satisfaction comes in as well, if they see that the employee is supporting them, especially if, if uh, there are kids at home, for example, and you are saying, okay, you can shift your working times, work whenever you can, whether you can talk with your husband and he's working or your um, wife at home or whatever it is, like the partner. But actually, this is, I think, something which is really satisfying also for the employees then. And then is when the health is also coming in to yeah. when they see, oh, I have the flexibility. I, when they are really relaxed about like, um, how can I work? How can I um, support my family on the one hand and also being mm -hmm. really supportive for the company on the other hand? Because um, what COVID shows us is nothing is predictable anymore. <laughs> and life is just a roller coaster as well as the company life. And it's not like something, a straight line. You have to go maybe sometimes a sidestep. And this is um, what I think what HR especially can do. Um, support your employees as much as possible in their needs they have right now, especially with kids maybe family members who are not at, living at home anymore, like older ones, um, taking everything in consideration, which mm -hmm. you never have taken maybe before mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. like they have our world. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Now it's changing. Mm -hmm. so, do you, so do you think really with, with the key lessons of last year and the new world of HR, that flexibility is one of the key things? I mean, there's no rule book. There's no policy book last year for you. You know, yeah, everyone coming to you and going, oh, do we have a policy for this? Like, mm. So do you think that that flexibility element is something that, you know, taking forward for the, 
that that needs to be embedded in the HR to have that flexibility to look at home working, different policies. And I mean, this year is going to throw even more up, really. Mm -hmm. There are three things that I've, I've seen um, developing throughout 2020 and, and one particularly made my heart very happy, but I will take them in, in crescendo. So the first is that if you look at the training offering to employees, um, there was a very um, worthy to celebrate um, you know, change in ratio between very um, hard technical skills and having trainings on resilience or mm -hmm. uh, mental health or awareness or mm -hmm. um, um, empathy and listening, leading with compassion. So those, those words that were borderline taboo in the business mm -hmm. world you know yeah. they they got normalized mm -hmm. and they got filled with life that is one the second is um more and more people um started to really look at interaction over just action and reaction so mm -hmm. how do we interact with each other and how do we communicate and then the third one, which I, I told you I'm particularly happy with because of my, my background in journalism, uh, people are looking for storytelling capabilities because that is one way of making sense. Whether they are looking into storytelling for customers, you know, how they navigate it through what is, has been going on, whether they are looking at storytelling for recruitment, you know, both as recruiters and as candidates, how do you mm -hmm. put subtitles to your candidates' stories that you hear in interviews, you know? Um, and I, I hope that this uh, newfound respect and interest in storytelling is here to stay because that is a powerful, powerful tool which HR can, can drive the development of throughout the company um, for, for people to make collective sense mm -hmm. of what is going on. And also speaking about mental health, I see a lot of rise in coaching, but not just business coaching, also life coaching and um, um, combined life and work coaching. Um, because as, uh, as I keep telling uh, people that I work with, but including friends, the most important stories are, are those that we tell ourselves. And, and how do we align our own stories with the company's stories? We've all, we've all been on a journey, haven't we? But we've all been on different journeys and everyone's yeah. had different challenges. Yeah. And if you can replicate those challenges and appreciate other people's challenges and journeys and share that pack in a story, people can buy into it, understand it, respect it, you know, and, and, and own it a little bit more as well. Massively, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, diversity and inclusion, you know, is, is not just about the visible things, mm -hmm. but it's about diversity of meaning and diversity of our truths, which yep. are equally valid, depending mm -hmm. on our own journeys, you know, and yep. um, I, I do, I do say that um, diversity is natural, but inclusion is intentional. Mm -hmm. Yep, very, very definitely, very true. yeah. yeah. Well, and I think, you know, and I'd be interested here because, you know, this piece around narratives and what are those intentions? And I think, you know, here, as we talk about what is the flexibility of HR, um, there was a really interesting article. I think it came out like last month it's from Boston Consulting Group, how the pandemic has really released like value added work. That productivity has actually mm -hmm. gone up way up. And it's because, you know, to that point of, you know, like Jim was saying, you know, do we have a policy for that? No, we don't, because it's really about, okay, what's adding value? So a lot of that fluff in terms of, is this really necessary got put out of the way and it wasn't being called back because people said, okay, here, how are we really challenging processes? If they're not effective, well, you know, what do we need to do to get it done? And so here, as we look to, you know, how do we get a good balance as to, you know, here, I, I don't like the term flatter organization because you can have a flat organization, but you have to ask that boss every single question. 
that doesn't necessarily mean your, your organization is more efficient if it still has a bottleneck. But really, you know, here that aspect of autonomy or here how are teams really becoming more um, have a higher agility because they're taking more ownership that it's not about the working hours that you're doing, but here really about how are you working as a team. This poses a, a different challenge to us in HR is as we continue to move forward, how do we help ensure that kind of that effective um, empowered ownership type of uh, work? How do we help keep that moving forward? Maybe I can say something just quickly because that that resonates a lot with me, mm -hmm. um, and and maybe a, I pose a question. You know, Jim, you you entered uh, the flexibility um, and what's happening. Uh, we actually found that the the pandemic threw everything up in the air, right? So um, the world changed, and people were looking for stability. They were looking for lighthouses, um, and what they needed to know is what's not going to change. So what are the mm -hmm. truths that we have within the company? Mm -hmm. And that posed a really interesting paradox or dynamic where um, people wanted ownership and accountability and they wanted to be agile, but at the same time, they wanted to be told what, what's my box where everything is safe? Um, what's not going to change for me? And it was really, it was really difficult with the communication. You actually mm -hmm. saw that the communication changed where some people were saying, well, I own this, but can you just give me a hint on like, is this safe to do? And um, so maybe the question I'm posing is, did, mm -hmm. did anyone else notice that the communication changed within the company where employees were asking for, you know, or, you know, wanting the accountability, the ownership to run things, but at the same time, just wanting more top down instruction on what they could rely on? Did anyone mm -hmm. notice that? Yes, for sure. They, they, I think this helped help and push us to be um, um, more secure of what we are doing, right? So we need that part where somebody is telling you, okay, yeah, you're doing uh, in the right way or you're going in the right direction with this and that. And for sure, the uh, communication changed a lot with all this. Um, they even are, for me, people was more open to ask questions to make sure they were doing the right path than before, right? Before it's more like everybody feels so certain of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And now with this, uh, of course, you start um, getting more um, maybe uh, preoccupied of how you're doing the things. Are, are they right? Are they wrong? And the communication is it's key. So uh, of course we have all, all online communication. And as you said before, Mark, it's really important to ask people how they feel, uh, how, how they are doing the things, if they feel they're going in the right path. But for people it's really important now uh, that uh, somebody is supporting them and letting know that they are doing the right um, work or in the right path. Uh, to to grow to uh, develop themselves and their, their teams because also uh, leadership is key on those moments too uh, because the communication needs to be not only by HR or uh, you know within HR but also all the leaders that we have uh, absolutely they they are really key on this. Yeah. Uh, process that we're uh, living right now and in the future. Yeah. But I totally agree with you, Letty. But actually, what I experienced as well was also mm -hmm. that it was not just on work purpose. So I received a lot of calls during um, the pandemic. It's just like the people want to know, like, really something easily. They can answer this by themselves. It's just like about like typical normal questions, not about work related. It's more about like that. I experienced, I thought like, sometimes they do not know anything else anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, so it's like <laughs> yes. I need the mm -hmm. security. And so I ask everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that's what I experienced. And as well as, as you said, also like, and this is maybe coming also back to Lizzie's questions about like um, communication also with leadership is that the leader was not always present during this time. 
Mm -hmm. That's what I experienced because if you are at home as um, the leader of the team, you just have like one phone and <laughs> not be available yeah. to everyone every time. <laughs> so yeah. They are not reachable anytime. And so the people could make or have to make decisions mm -hmm. sometimes by their own. And also because the leaders also had like the challenge at home because of kids and stuff like this, mm -hmm. they had a different mm -hmm mind shift what I experienced mm -hmm. totally different they they experienced the same what their employees experienced and so there's it was not just oh you have to be available 24 7 it was more than like oh yeah well I have to be with my kids now and have to revisit them can we have a talk in like two hours or something like this and I think this is what's really changing with corona and covid so that um the leaders had a real mindset to mm -hmm. Liz, I think maybe you shared it, but there was uh, an article uh, comparing the leadership skills required for remote teams versus non-remote teams. Mm -hmm. Did you mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. I can, I don't remember exactly which, uh, which, where it came from, but it kind of demonstrates what leaders need to do in the context of a remote team. Uh, and it's quite fascinating. And what I find to be interesting is those leaders that were strong in an environment where they were not a remote team are all of a sudden in a position where they need to be remote for a while. Yeah. Uh, it really changes, it really shakes up the system. It's, uh, it's quite a challenge to, 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 to pivot and adjust and, and to operate in that new environment, right? Absolutely. So yeah, um, Trello. Trello gave out a lot of really great workbooks for free. Um, so, uh, and really around that aspect of how are you engaging? How are you looking? And that, you know, I mean, Goodness gracious, how many leadership trainings have we done where it's like, stop trying to manage your people via their hours? <laughs> your own, that's their only, their physical presence has nothing to do with their output or their productivity. I mean, if COVID brought us anything, I mean, it's exactly that point that leaders had to understand, ah, trust, intention, leading with principles, or we hire in, uh, intelligent adults. They'll be able to, they can organize a vacation. <laughs> somehow should be able to organize and you know that we we really do trust them that we're not micromanaging just because to your point annie we only have one phone we could they could not function the way that they did in the office where they could perhaps constantly overlook so it was that aspect of how are we learning to really take ownership because we can't ask all the time and at the same time saying hey these things need to get done how are we collaborating and perhaps going at it differently um, as the team and not um, saying, okay, hey, boss, I'm having a conflict. Can you please clarify this for me? Or that kind of omnipotent lead, father figure leader really got put into challenge to say, hey, you know, here we are. We're all adults struggling, juggling and having a hard time of it. And okay, what do we need to do to get this done? <laughs> yeah. That's an awesome comment. Or alternatively, it was a flashpoint that showed them that I don't want leadership at all. Yeah. Um, there was nowhere to hide in a, in a <laughs> distributed team in the office. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and two key words, trust mm. and accountability, I think. Uh, but trust, as you said, Liz, it's a key with all these uh, things happening. As Annie said, uh, well, I, I don't have to tell you exactly every day what you need to do. But it's because also I trust you. So it's, uh, it's key, it's key, the trust. Yeah. Speaking, speaking about trust, um, I was quite happy to be in, in several conversations when um, people admitted to actually having more trust in the leaders who were comfortable with, with showing their vulnerability and showing that they are having just a, a hard time mm -hmm. as everybody else. And, um, you know, that, that was genuine and that was human and that built a lot of trust. Going a little bit back to the communication um, challenges, <clears throat> one thing that, that um, was quite um, an important point um, throughout last year was making people aware that staying back to normal is not the best um, way of managing <laughs> people's expectations. Mm -hmm. um, so what is that back to normal? If going back to how things were, then well, maybe no. 
but it's normal means being in a situation when we do have more visibility and we do feel that things are steadier and we do feel that some things you know are sustainable then that's a normal but back to normal uh you know in in communication throughout throughout last year it had quite um not so good effect on on how people read the messages that's going back to normal very true yeah the the new normal was that we don't want to go back what are those things that we don't want to leave mm -hmm. you know we we really do want to leave them behind so you know, and that maybe leads us into kind of the last question of, you know, what are you looking forward to um, for 2021 and particularly the role of HR? What do you see as, you know, as we come into, okay, it's already been a crazy, you, you probably all saw the meme after, after the seven day trial of 2021, I would like to return my subscription. Yeah. <laughs> But as you think about it, you know, in, in our, in your own roles, so we, we all have different roles that we're playing within HR, within the space of people at work. Where do you see kind of your focal point for 2021 um, um, moving forward really around that, that supporting the people aspect? I believe the employee experience will be mm -hmm. uh, uh, really focused for us, mm -hmm. but uh, we need to get all the learning that we have from this year, past year, right? So uh, keep being flexible, which mm -hmm. will, will be key also on the growth and uh, the way we keep moving to the future and all that part that we learn uh, how really people is more in the purpose, not only on work, but on life too. Mm -hmm. And make sure that we take all that into consideration in the way we create mm -hmm. new opportunities for people and develop them for the future. Yeah. My, my HR wish for 2021 is that there is a, um, that HR reaches that point of no return where it goes from human resources management into human relationships management. Mm -hmm. And they move away from rather safe, reactive, mm -hmm. um, you know, business partners into really proactive and, and, a guardian of, of people values and people dynamics inside an organization. And they do meaningful work and they see, uh, I don't know if we're talking recruitment, they see candidates in, in terms of transferable, transferable skills, in terms of potential, mm -hmm. in terms of resilience, in terms of how they can address a business need and not, uh, you know, the closest candidate that ticks most of the boxes on a grocery list, um, you know, request from a hiring manager. So moving away from human resources management into human relationships management, I, I would love for HR to do that. My recruiting friends, my TA friends, did you all hear that? No more grocery <laughs> list, no more grocery list. Just wanting to make sure that that point got, you know, hit. I, I will I will keep saying that. <laughs> and, and we'll come back in a year's time and see how that went. I've got, actually, I've just got a little list of things to go through here. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm conscious of the time because we've got three minutes left. So, so do keep answering that question because it will be the last one. Yeah. So. Mark? Uh, from my side, you know, I, I think uh, if I had one wish, it would be for the people function to to continue changing things uh, into the direction that it should be. You know, now we've seen um, how, quote unquote, hard it was to change things. Um, it actually moved very quickly. Um, you know, maybe maybe the people function, HR wasn't the hero people wanted, but it was the hero they needed, um, <laughs> right? You know, when, yeah. when uh, people issues came up, um, HR was there. And then the question is, well, what happens into the future? You know, when things stabilize again, um, we don't have a pandemic going on, um, uh, are HR then going to sit back in their seat? You know, maybe similar mm -hmm. to Manola, what, what was said, you know, I hope that the change continues and there's really that transformation 
uh, down that one-way street. Um, but, but I'm confident as well it will happen. I mean, um, and maybe to use those narratives, right? Use that storytelling with, uh, with the consequences if we don't do that. Yeah, excellent. I hope so as well. I hope that employees will be centric for HR in the future more and more. Like M M HR doesn't have like the best reputation mostly in companies. <laughs> Actually, that's what we have to find <laughs> and I hope we can change. This is why we're changing it with our circle and you all being gone. <laughs> <laughs> that employees will be centric and that, um, that we are changing our work, that our employees are happy to work with us. Um, and make sure that everyone feels well and supportive in the companies. That would be my major wish for 2021. Mm -hmm. Alan. So my wish, I've, I'm excited about all that's happening in the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. Mm -hmm. It's finally hit a level where it's not, it's no longer an afterthought. It's, it's in the forefront of everybody's minds. Mm -hmm. My wish is that that momentum continues and it, and it grows um, and becomes more and more important even this year, I should say, now that we're in 2021. And I'd also like to see HR be more of a business partner as we've been talking about for a long time. Um, I'd like to see that carry on in 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to see everybody get vaccinated as well. I saw the best, um, the best funny twist to getting people vaccinated that if they uh, if they made the vaccine available on on Amazon, you know everybody would be vaccinated by Saturday, possibly Friday if they have Prime. <laughs> <laughs> and even on Sundays if they accept Sunday deliveries, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's great. Awesome. Well, I can't. We cannot thank you enough for being that that beautiful beacon that HR is really it's not the police function. It's really that piece of how are we helping people in terms of their impact, their growth, their relationships at work. And each one of you, I have been honored to work with, meet and uh, play with. And uh, so thank you so much for being on our, our circle. Um, Jim and Martin, I, um, I am so excited that we were able to do this and as we continue to move forward and as we look to our wishes and desires for 2021. Um, it's really about this satisfaction. And I'd just like to speak on Jim and my behalf. Can you notice we behaved ourselves? Yeah, I, I don't even recognize it. Are you guys here? Where are you? Like, <laughs> we're, we're actually sat in the room like, next to each other. We're pretending like, that we're I actually, can't you know. get a word in edgewise. Yeah, yeah, no, we should have <laughs> What we have agreed is that for the rest of 2021, we'll have a similar haircut because last year I actually had started to have some hair, whereas now I've just gone back to I need to look like Jim, but I haven't got the beard, and that's how you distinguish between the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> and that and I haven't been on Game of Thrones. And with that, I make it on the hour. Um, thank you everybody for watching. If you're watching again, you've made it through to the end, which is amazing. Um, and don't forget you need to press the subscribe button. Um, not because we want you to subscribe, we just need the numbers to make it look like we're going somewhere. And one day, uh, Jim, Elizabeth and me will be a uh, YouTuber billionaires, not just millionaires, gonna be billionaires through all the great work we do with HR. I have and, uh, right. um, Do also go to rcircle.co and have a look around because I've spent a little bit of time actually putting some in there. Um, there's new content, there's a list of events, definitely not Berlin, Phil, and um, it's, it's all good. So with that, we'll leave you. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Thank have you. a great one ahead, everybody. Have a great evening.